Hey, this is Notzer, and this is a look at the late tier Japanese destroyers. At tier 6, we've got the Fubuki. This is the mainline Japanese destroyer. It's got 3x3 on its torpedo systems, four 127mm guns, at okay speed at 35 knots, and a fair concealment at 6.1. The thing that really is the key about this ship is the three torpedo launchers that go to 10 kilometers. And of course, as a Japanese destroyer, it has absolutely no armor. No big deal there. No Citadel either, because it's a destroyer. So the Fubuki, I play it a lot in ranked, or I was playing a lot in ranked. Maybe I'll play it in ranked on Wednesday, I don't know. Either way, what is the strategy of the Fubuki? Stay undetected, send torpedoes at predictable targets, and hopefully you can finish off low health targets. If you have to go one-on-one -on -one with your guns, you can be okay, but it isn't advised. In this game, I sent three launchers all at the New Mexico. The reason is there is multiple enemy ships in the area. The nice thing about a lot of mainline Japanese destroyers is that they've got their torpedoes broken up into three. So you can choose to keep one back in case there is something else coming because each torpedo does a ton of damage and it's pretty easy to wipe them out in just a handful. Another ship at tier 6, we've got the Hatsaharu. This is the alternative line. The differences between it has one less torpedo launcher, which is significant, same torpedo range, and its AA is slightly better. A little bit better speed, slightly better concealment. 100 meters is very tiny, but it can be the difference between spotting a target and not spotting a target. I have also used this in some competitive matches. However, it's more like my number two. The Fubuki and Ranked really works out. They're rocking the same torpedoes. You just don't have that extra launcher to make a mistake like you can with the Fubuki. However, 10 kilometer range torpedo is, I mean, it's amazing. It really is the difference maker compared to the next ship that we're going to look at, which is the Shinoname. 10 really gives you two extra kilometers to have a target move in and move out. You've got your concealment, and by the way, every single concealment number that you see is considering that you pick up concealment as a destroyer and you're using a consumable in your camouflage. It's, it's extremely important that you focus on picking up concealment as fast as possible. And the build that you're seeing is very standard. I do like survivability expert even at this mid-tier section, but I will say I prefer picking up torpedo rearm first because you're going to be doing torpedoes 99% of your time as a Japanese and you need to get comfortable using your torpedoes. Otherwise, I would recommend another destroyer line. The Hatsaharu is okay at tier 6. Speaking of tier 6 again, we've got the premium Shinoname. This has 3x3 torpedo systems. It has three sets of two guns, so you gain two more guns, a little higher alpha damage, absolutely no AA protection whatsoever. Concealment is in the ballpark of everyone else. Speed, okay. I would definitely recommend with Japanese destroyers to pick up the speed signal flag. But there's one thing that you might notice that is a weakness, and nobody can argue that. Your torpedo systems give up two kilometers. Now, that's not a big deal if you are very comfortable being close to the front, there's no enemy aircraft carriers, and you're basically the best concealed ship on either side. That's not a big deal. When it's a big deal is aircraft carriers. If there is an enemy ship that does have better concealment than you, and possibly radar. If you're getting up tiered, you're going to face radar, and radar absolutely works out to 8 kilometers. Whereas at 10 kilometers, you can outrange it pretty much at this tier. So that's really something you need to consider. However, it's nice that it's premium. You can put in your best commander without having to spend doubloons. It does have the extra two guns, so you can fight other destroyers more effectively than something like the Fubuki or the Hatsaharu. So there's a lot to like about it. You just need to understand that you get a lot less room to make a mistake. 
is this a ship for you? I don't know. It is a ship that you can earn in-game, no matter, you, know, you don't have to spend any money. It is a part of, it's not Science of Victory, it's the Japanese campaign that is in existence right now. This is the reward ship. So, anyone can get it at any point in the game. If you're interested in the Japanese destroyers, you know, maybe you came to the game late, I want to pick up the Shinonome. At Tier 7, we have the Akatsuki. It's got 3x3 torpedoes, which is appreciated. It does give you that window to decide if you want to send or not send. And the 3x2 does continue forward, so you should expect to have six guns pretty much here on out, depending on, obviously, the traits. Average AA, pretty good speed, honestly, for its tier. The concealment is what's troubling. 6.4 is definitely a weak point compared to other Japanese destroyers. And I think Wargaming's thought process is it's really fast for its tier, why not give it a little bit worse concealment as sort of a balancing effect? In practice, it ends up being the most notable thing that is weak about this ship. You just can't get close to other Japanese destroyers, other destroyers in general. Some of them are just beating you by three, four hundred meters, plus or minus. You need to know these ranges so you can be as competitive as possible. But... You're getting used to the 3x3 launchers. It is a very effective strategy to send two, keep one, or send all three if you feel like that's going to be the difference maker and finish off the game. I can't say that I have super success in the ship, but I also can't say that I fail in the ship. I'm very comfortable with the whole when do you fire, when do you don't fire, when do you want to be aggressive, when do you want to dodge. The maneuverability is pretty average, but... I can't complain until you get to something like, oh, I don't know, the Akizuki. The Akizuki is really bad maneuverability, so I'll take it all. I'll love it at this tier. There is no torpedo reload booster available yet. That comes a little bit later, but that's the Akatsuki. At tier 7 again, we have the Shiratsuyu. This has 2x4, so you drop one extra launcher for a little bit more torpedo per launch. Yeah, it ends up working out that, honestly, I like the 3x3 versus the 2x4. Gun systems, it drops one gun, so you only have five versus six. It's a little slow, AA's average at best. Concealment is fantastic, and health is very average. Now, this ship underwent some changes recently with the torpedo reload booster. Part of the reason why I wanted to stop at the early tiers was... I need to talk about this. So what do they change? Well, they made Torpedo Reload Booster, which is a consumable that is only available to the Japanese, very universal in its effectiveness. And they're using it as a balancing tool on this particular ship. This was the best ship in the game at this tier for destroyers. It just kicked their butts. Now, I think that's because it could outrange the radar, 10 kilometer range, which is very helpful. And it also could send enough torpedoes that even hydroacoustic couldn't protect you while in your own smoke. It was a brute force way of dealing with a very overbearing meta. Let's face it, smoke meta is very overbearing. And I think it was very fair. What we're left with is having to decide between smoke or torpedo reload boost. And I don't really like that choice. It turns the ship into a very average tier 7 Japanese destroyer, just like everything else. Quite frankly, I would prefer to have 3x3 launchers versus 2x4 if I'm stuck using the same sort of build. Smoke and the speed boost you're going to need. It's extremely slow compared to the Akatsuki at the same tier. So, Shiratsuyu, it's sort of limbo right now. I need to relearn how to play it. At tier 8, we've got the Kagero mainline. The Shiratsuyu was the alternative line tier 7. Mainline Kagero, 2x4. This is just an extension of the ships we've seen previously. I mean, it could be the exact same ship for all I know. 2x4, 3x2, it's got one extra gun. It's, what can I say, extra health is appreciated. Good concealment, 5.4, best in class, I believe. So you always out-conceal every single ship. Unless, of course, you make a mistake. And 2x4. What, what's the difference between 2x4 and 3x3? Well, 
The Japanese destroyers do a ton of damage per torpedo. That's partially why they're so nerfed. They've made the detectability of Japanese torpedoes in particular very forgiving for the enemy. They've always felt like, man, they just do too much damage. We can't afford to have them have the same concealment as something like an American or a German. The damage output is just too high, so they're going to give a little bit more reaction time to the enemy. What ends up happening is you don't hit more than maybe one or two torpedoes on these suckers most of the time. Now, it's gotten a little bit better. They gave very tiny buffs, but it's just one of the things that you have to really deal with. In this case, the guy pulled a Notzer. He ran in the island, and clearly I could easily wipe him out. I only needed three torpedoes. That tells you how much damage they do. As far as build is concerned, it's a very average build. Concealment, faster torpedo rearm, improved aiming accuracy because it helps the launchers rotate quicker. You get the acceleration, concealment. The tier eight for the alternative line is the Akizuki. This is a huge departure from everything else. It's got four by two 100 millimeter guns. Yes, 100. It's got one launcher for 610 millimeter torpedoes at 10 kilometer range, which is nice. AA is actually pretty good. Speed is terrible. The turn radius is horrible. The concealment is very good. Maybe not the best. And the health is astronomical, honestly. So what's so different about this? Well, the 100 millimeter guns. It's a gunboat. It really relies on sitting in smoke and firing from it. It's got good range, it used to have terrible range, and you might notice that my build involves inertia fuse high explosive. I thought that was terrible for destroyers. Well, no, you can't globally say stuff is good or bad. You need to consider the millimeter that you are using. 100 millimeters is honestly terrible at this tier. You will shatter without inertia fuse high explosive on destroyer hulls. I'm not even kidding you. I have shattered on destroyers as I'm firing at them. And that is really debilitating. So you pick up inertia fuse high explosive to compensate for that. It makes the HE function similar to 127, which is the main caliber type that the Japanese use. It also has a torpedo reload booster, and you might notice that it is not included in the smoke slot, so you can have both. This is how the Shiratsu used to be. But for this particular one, you understand because it's only got one single launcher, so it needs a little bit of oomph in those really dire scenarios. At tier eight again, we have the premium tier eight high school fleet, Hede Kaze. Now this one is very interesting. You might notice that I'm rocking the 100 millimeters. You have 127 millimeters, 100 millimeters, and then you have the American. I believe they're 127 as well, or 120. Either way, you have three styles of guns that you can equip on it. It's 2x4, 10 kilometer range. That's pretty safe at this point, right? But you have three different gun systems you can choose from. The range is the same on every single one. So you won't have that extra range that you might get for the Akizuki. The 127 Japanese standard, very slow turret traverse, very slow rate of fire, high damage per shot. They're okay, but the turret traverse is abysmal. You might even consider picking up expert marksman. It's that bad. The second gun system that you can use is the 100 millimeters and is very similar to the Akizuki. And the third one is a American gun system that is similar to the Benson. Very fast turret traverse, but you only have three guns. You do sacrifice a lot of guns for that fast turret traverse. And the rate of fire is comparable to the 100 millimeters. So what is the attraction for this particular ship well you can make it into whatever you want it to be you can have the commander be a trainer for your akizuki the mainline japanese or you can do even a american gun flavor if you so choose that's why this is a pretty attractive tier 8 premium that can serve as your trainer for all 
At tier 9, we have the Yugamo. This is 2x4 once again. It's got 3x2 127mm guns. This gets up to 12 km range torpedoes. Recently added, by the way. I think it was stuck with the 8 km range and then I think 10 km range. But 12 is appreciated. It allows for builds that include torpedo acceleration, if you so choose, great concealment, speed is average, maybe even poor. So 2x4, what does 2x4 allow me to do? Uh, you know, the same thing always. You do have to commit to using both of your launchers most of the time. People are very elusive. You do get access to the faster torpedo rearm module, which is appreciated, and I would recommend you take it. The builds are pretty straightforward. Otherwise, best concealment in class, you try and get. Last stand, torpedo rearm. I do like survivability expert on my destroyers. I find that I get into a lot of scenarios where I'm just engaged at close range, and that is very dangerous. The torpedoes do just as much damage as you expect. If you get two, three, that's basically 100 to zero on most battleships very close to 100 to zero it, it just does a ton of damage if you hit anywhere that isn't the torpedo bulge that's the thing about the japanese if you're a destroyer you can't afford to take a single japanese torpedo they will basically one-shot you yigamo tier 9 very effective it's a very it's very enjoyable experience i had no problem with it whatsoever great concealment i mean you can see the massive range that i get to work with by the effective Torpedoes hitting the target and not being detected, so it's great. And then at tier 10, we've got the Shimakaze. 3x5 torpedo launchers. This is really king in class for the torpedo launchers and the amount of torpedoes you can bring. 3x2, 127mm guns. Fair range. They recently buffed the rate of fire and the turret trimmers, so that's appreciated. 39 knots for speed. It's actually very fast. And that's not including the speed flag, so you can get it up to 40, 42. But in general, how do you play the Shimakaze? This is probably the most overplayed destroyer, and I'm saying that as kind as I can. Players need to learn how to use the Shimakaze before they pick it up and play it. It's just so notorious with 15 torpedoes. That's going to be the solution to all my problems. No, not really. You have to know when 5 is enough, when 10 is enough, when 15 is enough. It's very rare that you should ever use all three of your torpedo launchers in your Shimakaze. But, if you play it right, and you consider all the factors, this is a terror for battleships. They will take so much damage from 5 torpedoes, 10 torpedoes. You can get 20 kilometer range torpedoes, but... The concealment on those are honestly terrible. I really wouldn't recommend it. I would stick with the 12 or the 8. I like the 12 because it gives me a little bit more of a window to use them. The guns are okay. I wouldn't go one-on-one -on -one against a Soviet or a German, but as an additive part of an attack force, oh yeah. Fire those guns, fire from behind islands in smoke. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the Japanese destroyers. Good luck out there with them if you choose to pick it up. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.